thank you for joining us today in this session of uh, our webinar on uh, global citizen scholarship. Before we get on to uh, the details of the scholarship, I would like to uh, introduce you to our panelists. I'm Sheetal Das Gupta, part of the marketing team here in Singapore. Then I have Vishal Gera who heads the Corporate Connect program. I have Shija who heads the CBSC here in Singapore. And we have Rashi from India who heads the scholarship program. Now before we get into the details of the Global Citizen Scholarship, now this scholarship is going to help your children study in Singapore. Now let's try and understand Singapore first before they, uh, we get into the details of the scholarship. Singapore, yes, it's called the small uh, red dot. Now here when we talk about uh, a small red dot, the size doesn't matter. Even if it is small, it is the Asia's power hub. And, and when we talk about uh, Asia, Singapore definitely has a big, big role to play. You will see a good brand, uh, blend of Western and Eastern culture here. All the cultures out here live in absolute harmony. It is safe, clean and green. Even at 11 o'clock in the night, you can safely move around without any fear. Yes, it is a bit expensive for the expatriates, but there is a way around it. The major areas of expenditure are where you live, the school you go to and the medical expenses. Choose the right school, the right place to stay and have yourself covered uh, with medical insurance. You should be able to manage your finances here. Then of course, when we talk about Singapore, there is a funny language which is very inherent to Singapore, which is Singlish. You will hear a lot of can, can, already, da pao. So get used to this, uh, this language which is very peculiar to Singapore. Moving on to the education system here in Singapore. Just to add to the safety part, uh, you will not see in most any of the countries or any places around the world uh, except for Singapore where you have eight or nine year olds traveling by themselves in train uh, or any public transport reaching school by themselves. So it's, it's really that safe. Uh, moving on to the education system uh, in Singapore, there are three kinds of schooling solutions that are there. Uh, the first one is the MOE school, which is by Ministry of Education, which is the government school, which has a very high, high standard and pretty well known uh, across the globe. Uh, the admission to uh, MOE schools happens through a system, the grade one. For grade one, it is based on the vacancy. Or from grade two onwards, there is an exam that is AEIS examination that the students has to pass. Of course, the preference, uh, obviously, uh, for Singapore citizens and permanent residents is first, and then comes the foreign students. And uh, looking at the international community that is there in Singapore, there is a huge chunk of foreign students in Singapore, and that's where the international schools come in picture. So there are international schools and there are also uh, international schools which follow a country curriculum like German curriculum or European curriculum. Uh, in the international school segment, if you look at the foreign students uh, in last uh, five years statistics, the students, foreign students intake has actually increased drastically uh, from say 45,000 to now 75,000 students. Uh, and the international schools have also increased from 60 to 90 and GIIS, so Global Indian International School, is one of the largest international schools in Singapore. Uh, we will delve in deeper and more about GIS in future slides. Uh, let's move on to higher studies. So now you would be wondering that my child will do his grade 11, 12 in Singapore and should he, you know, have to come back to India? What are his prospects of higher studies? Singapore has a lot of options available. Now there are some government uh, institutes like NTU, NUS, do you have uh, public um, uh, colleges also, there are affiliation colleges and there are partnership uh, uh, colleges also. So now there is a lot of options. You have the MDIS, Kaplan uh, schools where, uh, where ch children can go or you have the prestigious NUS, NTU which, are the, which come in the global ranking where your kids can uh, you know, do the, their higher studies. Some of the courses which we have seen children popularly select out here in Singapore, you have the uh, business, uh, economics, computing, IT, you have creative design also and architecture medicine. Now let's move on 
to this scholarship. Now, uh, Global Indian International School is actually giving you this chance and this scholarship for students who are meritorious and, and deserving and, and should get a chance in life to you know, actually get into good colleges in the future. Let's try and understand what this uh, GIS is and, and how it all started. Global Schools Foundation is a uh, non-profit organization which started in 2002. It has two brands of schools under it, which is the GIS, Global Indian International School, and OWIS, which is One World International School. It also has cultural center, it has um, global excellence center, where we are encouraging students to do much more than just academics. Uh, after school programs, weekend programs are kind of encouraging students to go much, much beyond uh, just academics and for towards holistic development. It all started, as I mentioned to you, in 2002 with just 48 students. And today, after 18 years, we have 23 campuses in seven countries with over 15,000 students. GIS Pungol Smart Campus is where your children will come to study. And I would like you to go through the different facilities which we have. It's the state of the art campus. It has digital uh, classrooms. It has learning commons and all the environment which is needed for a child to get inspired and be holistically prepared for future. In this uh, digitally smart campus, we have the provision of virtual classrooms. We ensure that the children, even if they are sick, uh, they are out for some uh, school work, they should not miss what's being taught in the school. And because of that, we have ensured that there is virtual classroom available. And especially in today's time where uh, stay at home, work from home, virtual, remote is something which is commonly heard. This is coming very handy to our students and they are sitting at home and uh, listening to the lectures which are happening in school and not missing a single uh, lecture. So their studies are not compromised here. In fact, GIS has been conducting virtual classroom uh, to support all our students who have been sitting at home or not able to attend the classes because of the current situation uh, all across locations uh, across the globe uh, in our campuses. Today I couldn't go to school, but I could attend these lessons from my home and I didn't miss out on these. The platform made it very much similar to how it would be if I was in a classroom because I could see the boards, I could see the teacher. I could ask the teacher a couple of questions I had uh, related to the subject and she had the ability to uh, answer those while she was teaching at the same time. The classrooms are very interactive. We have a fully equipped digital classrooms with smart boards, video conferencing, mics. is enabling us to give greater flexibility to our students. So it's non-restrictive. So if our students have stepped out due to extracurricular activities or they're participating in sports or MUN or if they're not well, I think it makes it easier for the teaching to continue. When I'm using the virtual classroom, I can reach out to the students who are here as well as the students who have logged into the system. This keeps all the students at a similar pace 
and helps them to understand how the class is progressing. GIS is way ahead of most of the schools in Singapore in the concept of implementing technology in class which is student friendly and also teacher friendly. It's going to set new standards in learning because I think it's going to be much more collaborative and uh, student centered now. This is a tool that is facilitating anywhere, anytime learning for our children. To see the kind of excitement and the fact that so many of them are logging on from home is a testimony that this is a program that is working wonderfully well with our children and teachers. So, uh, Rashi, I would like you to now um, uh, take our uh, attendees uh, through the details of the uh, scholarship. So Global Citizen Scholarship is a scholarship for class 10th kids to complete the class 11th and 12th on a fully funded scholarship basis. We have no bond attached to this program. We started this in 2008 and till now over 85 students have already benefited out of it. The curriculum options that we offer under this scholarship is to study either IBDP board or the CBSE board. Talking about the eligibility criteria to apply for the scholarship is 80% the minimum you should get in your class 9th and 10th, 9th final examinations and 10th half yearlies or pre boards Then 80% again, it's the same for all other state boards and the medium of instruction is English. Moving on to the next slide, we have a written examination that is a three hour paper, which is divided into two sections. So part A, covers is basically an objective section that covers your English, mathematics, logical and analytical reasoning. Coming to part B is your essay writing where we will be testing your writing skills. In the objective section, you will have 100 questions to attempt and in part B, there is only one question. Then we have uh, added few more centers in India. So in total, we have around 25 centers where you can uh, reach out whichever is nearer to your place and appear for the examination. After the written exam, we have a Skype interview. The students who will be shortlisted through the written exam will get a notification through the email to appear for a Skype interview. Similarly, the students who further qualify for the final round will get an email notification to uh, hold the face-to-face -face interviews. For details, you can visit the website. All the details are mentioned there. Talking about the timelines, as of now, we have extended the application form submission deadline to 31st of March. So in case you have anybody known who has still not applied for the scholarship, they have a chance. So you can tell them to fill the application form till 31st of March. As of now, we have kept the exam date as 11th April, which is tentative. And again, the Skype will be conducted in second week of May, somewhere around that time. Face-to-face -face interviews we usually conduct in the end of May, uh, somewhere between 22nd to 30th of May. And then uh, we result the declarant first week of June. So the important things you need to remember about this program is the documentation process. Since you have already filled in the application form, you have already completed this thing. But I would like to inform the students who have not submitted their passport along with the application form, please carry your passport at the time of the examination, whichever center you are going to carry a passport copy or a receipt of the passport applied for. Facilities available for uh, scholarship students in Singapore. There is a world-class library which, with the facilities and uh, books are available across subjects and topics. Uh, there is uh, IT and design technology labs. There are more than 40 studios uh, in the smart campus, including a radio studio, a culinary studio, uh, a, a recording studio. Uh, there are science labs, sports facilities, cafeteria, and learning commons. Sheetal, would you like to share some about the hostel facilities? Yeah, absolutely. So we have a hostel, uh, uh, which is uh, especially for the scholarship children, and it is extremely close very, very close to the school. So children generally walk up to the school and go back in the evening. Uh, very comfortable, fully air conditioned. You have a swimming pool there. Uh, we have a warden who help, takes care of the children. There is cafeteria near the uh, hostel where the kids get their meals. So a very, very comfortable accommodation and a very safe accommodation for all our students.
at GIS, we have multiple curricula options available. So, in case your child is presently in CBSE and wishes to take IBDP for the higher studies, um, which is grade 11, 12, that is very much possible. But of course, we uh, usually recommend that the shift should happen after detailed consultation with the HODs. Uh, so, we have Shija here who heads CBSE. Similarly, we have Deepa Chandrasekhar who heads the IBDP. So, uh, a detailed discussion interview is uh, taken by these uh, HODs to understand if the child will be comfortable in shifting the curriculum. So, uh, with multiple curricula choice, uh, uh, it starts from grade 1 to grade 12. So, grade 1 to grade 12, we have CBSE, but we have complete international curricula available uh, uh, for children who do not want to continue with CBSE. So, we have IBPYP for primary, we have CLSP for uh, lower Cambridge, then we have IGCSE and IBDP for grade 11 and 12. GIIS now offers full international curricula from grade 1 to 12. From the International Baccalaureate Primary Years program, all the way through to the world-renowned International Baccalaureate in grades 11 and 12. These curricula were carefully selected to support our pedagogy equipping our students with the essential life skills to become the leaders of tomorrow. At GIS, we offer multiple curricula, but CBSE happens to be our core. GIS has been offering the CBSE curricula for the last two decades. We have a track record of success. We have an ASEAN topper. We also have 55% of our students who have scored 90% and above. We chose the CBSE system because both me and my husband have been educated in the CBSE system and both of us are postgraduates and doing well. These are the first generation kids who are going to be away from their home and I wanted them to be connected to their home country, India. Children are given an opportunity to think out of the box and explore their various potentials and talents that go beyond the prescribed syllabus. We believe that we need to provide students with the 21st century skills of communication, collaboration, critical thinking and creativity. And we never forget care, which is our value that we provide to students. They do the syllabus from the CBSE course book but there are a lot of apps, there are a lot of worksheets which also gives them the application oriented view that the IGCSE course gives them. They are making the kids equipped to handle the fast changing technology that is happening all around. I believe GIS with the technology that they have incorporated in all aspects of the academics will definitely give my child an edge. Our teachers are our greatest assets. They have a wealth of experience and competence to deliver the syllabus in the most appropriate and challenging way for our students. When I was in school, my parents never knew my teachers, nor my teachers knew my parents. But in GIS, it's not like that. The interaction with the teachers is very honest. The feedback they give is very useful. And the rapport between the teachers and the kids is very evident. GIS doesn't make you feel that it's my kid's school. It makes you feel that it is our school. GIS offers customized educational platforms which will ensure that the needs of every child are met. Our goal is to ensure that our students are ready for the future. They are equipped with all the requisite skills, competencies and knowledge that will take them to success. Let's look at uh, some of the uh, uh, you know scholars who have actually taken this uh, scholarship in the past. This scholarship as Rashi mentioned started in 2008. So, it has been running for more than 10 years now and in these 10 years we have uh, they, they are about 85 or more students who have been uh, you know uh, lucky to get this scholarship and, and have taken advantage of this. Uh, in terms of uh, these 85 students, the kind of curricula they have taken, it's 50-50 you can say. It's not that more of CBSE or uh, IBDP, but we've seen that 50-50 uh, is, is the number for both the curricula. 
92 uh, percent is the score of the CBSE students who have graduated from grade 12 till now. In these uh, 10 years, we have had three world toppers for IBDP and more than 50 percent have scored 40 points and above. IBDP is a tough course and if you say that, uh, you know, students are able to get uh, above 40 points, uh, their chances of getting into world class uh, universities becomes really, really high. So, these are the popular courses which our students have taken. Uh, we have medicine, which of course, always, always medicine uh, percentage will be less because it is anyway a very, very tough course. But a lot of students have gone in for engineering, different type of engineering. You have computer engineering, mechanical, uh, civil engineering and we have seen a lot of students going into uh, pure sciences also and economics and psychology. So, these are uh, uh, four big areas where we have seen our children have, uh, you know, taken up their higher studies after this scholarship. Some of the countries where they have gone to, you have, uh, uh, you know, US, UK, Canada, uh, Australia and some of the universities they have gone to. So, you have Georgia Tech, NUS, NUS NTU, uh, IIT, lot of students have gone back to India also. It is not that, you know, that once the child studies here in Singapore, he has to get stuck to Singapore or it is, you know, cannot go back to India. They have gone into very, very good uh, universities in India. University of British Columbia, Oxford University, Trinity College. So, if you see that uh, they, their chances of getting into global universities becomes really high. Saying that uh, there is also great opportunity in Singapore as she mentioned already before. Uh, uh, in current scenario, if you look at it in the current uh, statistics, what she has shared on the presentation, there is more than 20 percent who already who have actually selected Singapore as their further study destination and gone into one of the top universities like NUS, NTA or SMU. Now, we have uh, some of the testimonials of our uh, scholars uh, who, who have, uh, you know, uh, taken this scholarship and, and how they have felt about it. Namaste and hello everybody. I'm Kaveri Priya Putti and I'm from Hyderabad, India. I'm a 100% scholarship student as a part of the Global Citizen Scholarship by the Global Schools Foundation. When I was in grade 7, I used to go to a GII school as a center for my Science Olympiad Foundation second level exams. And I've been keeping track of all the scholars from 2014. And this year, when it was my turn to apply, I very eagerly applied for the Global Citizen Scholarship. We had to submit our resume along with our pre-board results and our ninth grade results. And then after we got shortlisted, we had a written test, which had two sections of math and English. And then after that, we had a series of interviews, three to be precise. My scholarship is 100%. This scholarship has consolidated all my high school achievements into one entity. And it has also um, done numerous things for me. Uh, firstly, I've learned to live on my own. Uh, and I get to go around the city in an MRT. And it has helped me become more independent, buying my own groceries or making my own food, for instance. Um, and secondly, it has helped me um, grow as a person. And it has also helped me build my resume because there are so many things, so many facilities, and there's state-of-the-art infrastructure here at the PG Smart campus. I live in a hostel very close to the school. It's a, a five-minute walking distance from school. And I have an amazing hostel. We have delicious food, free Wi-Fi, swimming pool, tennis court. Uh, we have AC, and we have everything that we could ever ask for. And we also get a monthly allowance every month. We have a really nice warden. I would definitely recommend the GII scholarship because it provides a platform uh, for international exposure. We have workshops at NUS and NTU. We get to build a resume. We have a very good counselor. We have a very good school. We get to participate in various competitions. Uh, and all of that consolidated will help us uh, get into very good colleges and I think this opportunity is something that nobody should miss.
we want you to meet one more student who's a current student he's a scholar and uh, we want you to uh, see how his day is starting from uh, going to school and in the night before bedtime hey guys i'm adna vashne a student from gis pongal smart campus and i'm going to show you what it's like to be me for a day It's about 8:55 right now, and with the breakfast done, we are heading to the school, which will take about five minutes, I think. And that's pretty convenient because the school is very near, so we don't have to take any other transport. We just walk to the school. So I'll see you guys there. Now I have a self-study period, which is supposedly a free time that the school provides you to think of ideas or you know do your homework or work on something of like your interest. So this is a very good part about the school because they give you some time to delve into studies yourself, and they just don't keep on teaching you throughout the day. So I'll most probably be coding, and I'll see you guys after this period. Back at the hostel now. It's about um, five eight, and I'm super tired. I had a computer science extra class, which just made me more tired right now. I'm standing right in front of the hostel door. Can't see that. So let's head back in and see what the others are up to. Frankly speaking, living in a hostel comes with its own sets of advantages and disadvantages. Firstly, it makes you independent. Basically, it prepares you for going to universities and you know living alone. Right now, you're not really living alone. You're still under supervision of a warden, which takes care of you, which looks after you, and believe me, she's very very nice. Apart from that, it also allows you to learn how to live. away from your family because that's a very major step that students have to take when they go into universities or they're applying for future education yeah it's difficult at first it's definitely difficult but then you start getting a hang of it so it gets better believe me it gets better Tell you guys a little bit about the scholarship now. So the scholarship I applied for and the one I'm currently on is called the Global Citizen Scholarship, which is a hundred percent scholarship and is worth about ninety thousand Singaporean dollars. It pays for your accommodation, pays for your tuition fees, your food, and basically everything. There was a written test which had I think questions from maths and English. So after the written test, there was a Skype interview. which was pretty interesting to be honest there was another interview which was face to face it had much specific questions from certain topics maybe from subjects or from you know what i want to do in future or what my life goals are and after that it took about i think a month or so to for the results to come out which was a very uh, stressful time for me to be very honest because i mean my future was uncertain Uh, I was preparing for IDJ at the time. Uh, nothing was clear if I would be coming here or not. My experience over here, to be very honest, has been pretty good. The scholarship and the hostel basically together pose a lot of challenges, which are both good. So it's about eight, I guess, and we're done with our dinner, and I'm headed back to our hostel. I'll probably be studying right now. I'll try to do all my maths homework. So I'll see you guys after that. Goodbye. All right. So I just managed to finish all of my maths homework and also an English essay which I was supposed to submit yesterday. And it's about twelve right now, and my day has come to an end. So this is how a typical day in my life looks like. 
I hope you guys like this video and thanks a lot for watching. Goodbye and good night. So I hope you enjoyed the video and uh, the experience which our scholars go through. Now before we get on to q and A, I I would like to announce that there would be a handful of people or handful of students who would be lucky to get this scholarship. But the rest of you uh, who are interested in studying in GIS uh, Smart Campus in Singapore, uh, the other scholarships are available for you and you can go to uh, SG scholarships and apply for those scholarships and um, uh, who knows, maybe you are uh, lucky to get the other scholarships and you, uh, we, we meet uh, very soon uh, and, and you are here in uh, Singapore uh, Smart Campus. Okay, so now we can move on to uh, Q&A. Mm. So I Vishal, think there is, so there is already a question by one of the participants, Navneet. Uh, Rashi, this one is for you. Uh, Navneet is asking how to figure out the syllabus for the written exam. Navneet, uh, whatever we have studied in class 9th and 10th, we'll be covering that. So you need to work on your English and mathematics. There will be no science questions onto it. So just uh, you can brief run through your class 9th books and class 10th English and mathematics. Okay, any, any more questions? If would like to know about the campus or the exam dates or syllabus or Shija, anything else? Um, I, I would like just uh, ask Shija if she would want to, you know, uh, share something with our attende uh, attendees today as to how we help these students, uh, you know, get into the uh, system. Sure. So, um, there is always a feeling of concern that um, we've come across when parents send their kids as young as 15 to a country which is very, very new to them. So trust us when we say that um, we handle this very, very carefully. Uh, a sense of belonging is the first thing that we make available to the students. Uh, teachers uh, pay special attention to have a very inclusive classroom to support their learning. We appoint mentors in the form of teachers for the students, appoint buddies. So the mental well-being is most important for us. We ensure that they are well settled. And then um, a lot of opportunities are made available to the students. And as you saw the testimonials from our scholars, it does take a little time, we're not denying that. But they settle in very well. And um, they, they enjoy the comfort of a very safe environment, yet get an exposure which will definitely add to their profiles and make their applications to the universities very, very good, very easy. And the placements are extremely good. If you see a record of our scholars, the placement records, it speaks very highly of how they've um, integrated so well in our school and then in our society and gone ahead to do very well in life. Thank you, Thank Shija. You. I think uh, that was great. I think it will be uh, very helpful for all our attendees. Uh, Vishal, do we have uh, more questions? Yeah, I think there are more questions coming up. So, Giselle has a question. Are there any options for commerce stream? Okay, by commerce, um, if you mean in CBSE, we do. We do offer accountancy, economics and business studies. As far as the international curriculum is concerned, we do have economics and business studies. So uh, there are a few students who after their uh, class 12th, either in CBSC or IB, have selected liberal arts in um, the local universities and are doing pretty well. Thank you, Shija. Uh, there's another question is, how do you handle the visa process? I think this one is for you, Rashi. If selected, when does the school term start? The visa documentation will be taken care by the GIS and if in case you get shortlisted, the school term will start in first week of July. And what we do is that uh, all the selected students, uh, we will uh, uh, be applying for visa from here Singapore and uh, once the approval letter comes, uh, you will have to come and collect your cards when you reach Singapore. So that, uh, don't worry about that. The warden, the school, the uh, admission team, everybody will be there to help you out.
Okay, I think this is more towards the current situation. Are schools working in Singapore, especially when we have uh, the, the current scenario of COVID-19? So, Sheetal, would you want to answer this one? Yeah, yeah the schools are uh, uh, functioning. Uh, but, of course, uh, now, nowadays it's, it's a break time after the exams and the schools will reopen in uh, April. Singapore's uh, minister also was here in school who shared his ideas on COVID. And uh, Singapore as, as a nation is very clear that lockdown is something which they are not looking at before time or after time. Uh, we, for that, we are totally prepared. We have virtual classrooms here. Uh, right now also we have part of students who are uh, taking these sessions from home and some of them are here in uh, the school. So teacher is able to manage both the, uh, uh, both the groups and uh, none of the students are missing anything uh, academically. So there is no harm there. So I, I believe uh, Sheetal has also covered what GIS as a school is taking care of or, and, or helping in a way to take care of the current situation. And uh, like she mentioned, uh, virtual classrooms, there are obviously uh, government directives which the schools are following, uh, managing uh, temperature checking, recording the temperatures uh, through our online systems on our apps and uh, maintaining those records, checking those systems uh, twice a day. Uh, so, and also uh, uh, desanitizing uh, sanitizing and uh, keeping up premises uh, checked at all times. So there's a lot of precautions and measurement uh, steps measures, that have yes, been taken, we, measures have been taken. Social distancing is also something that we're very, very particular about. Regular mails are sent from school to parents uh, or updating them about the measures which we are taking here in school. So parents are totally aware uh, of what they need to do in case there is 50-50 uh, decision taken. So who is going to stay back, which students are going to come, whether the school is going to open in April. All these information are regularly fed in uh, uh, to, to parents through uh, mails, through our MyGIS, which is our uh, in-house portal. Okay, I think uh, that answers uh, the, the current situation part. I'll go to the next question. Uh, okay, very basic one. What if I don't have a passport? Navneet, you do need a passport because other than that, without that, you cannot travel. But I believe uh, Rashi mentioned in our last webinar that if you don't have it, at least you need to have the receipt of the application uh, of passport submission uh, request when you're trying, when you're appearing for the exam. Right, Rashi? Yeah. Okay. And uh, now I'll go down to the next question. I think this one, uh, Shital, if you would like to take it, please explain what specific help career counselor provide uh, to guide selection of universities. Yeah, so we have career counseling cell in uh, Singapore. And uh, every application, every student, in fact, uh, uh, interacts with the counselor here. And she helps students bases their marks, their interest, uh, helps them to select universities, helps them to prepare their uh, statement, uh, ensures that the entire list of documents are sent in time to the universities selected. So complete handholding and guidance is done. And also the HODs ensure that uh, from the very beginning, uh, you know, uh, guide students as to which stream would be better for them and, and discussions are done on regular basis. Yeah, I would like to add here, in addition to that, we also organize uh, career fairs. We invite universities. Uh, we have webinars for students. So a lot of opportunities are given for them to select the course that they would like to pursue. Okay, I think there is one more question towards the exam. Akanksha is uh, on uh, live on the webinar. She's asking if I have studied in ICSE up till 10th, uh, should I refer to my uh, ICSE maths textbook for preparation or should I consider using the CBSE textbooks? Uh, All right, uh, the syllabus is uniform. It's ma either CBSE or IGCSE. Uh, the basic concepts need to be very clear and I understand both CBSE and ICSE as far as English and math is concerned, are uniform, it's standardized. So you don't really need to worry. Just be thorough with whatever has been taught in whatever curriculum you, you've done in class 10th. 
So the next question, thank you, uh, thank you, Shija. Uh, the next question is, uh, when will the written examination will be conducted? I guess this is already answered before. Uh, the uh, original date was 11th of April. However, this may get delayed, and whatever the new date would be, it will be communicated through email to all the participants. So, uh, Rashi, I just wanted to uh, ask, uh, how are we going to communicate through email? Is it to all the applicants uh, the new date? Yeah, so once we finalize the new date for the examination, we'll be sending the email to all the candidates. Plus, we will be also sending the admit cards, which would have the exam date, center address, and other relevant details for the examination. We assure all the candidates that none of uh, the GIS scholarship examination will not clash with your board examinations. So don't worry upon that. Uh, whatever is the next date, we'll let you know. Okay, uh, thank you, Rashi. This uh, question about uh, public transport near the school. So, of course, there is public transport available. Uh, there is uh, buses available. There is uh, MRT station, which is very close by, uh, where you can travel through for, for the city travel. However, as far as hostel, uh, travel from hostel to the school is concerned, as you saw in the earlier video, it's like five minute walk. It's not even five minutes. So, it's very close. So, it will be much easier to just walk through. Uh, I'll just go to what are Skype questions, interview based? This is more towards the examination. Uh, anybody would like to take it, Rashi or Shija? All right, the Skype interview happens once you've been shortlisted after the test and um, it's, it's not very subject specific. It's to understand your uh, aptitude, your capabilities, also, um, uh, how, how fit or um, ready you are to take up this curriculum that we are offering outside India, uh, to be away from home. We, we just send out feelers <clears throat> to find out um, if you're really ready and um, if there's something that uh, we should know about you. You could be a national level cricket player. Uh, you, you probably have an interest in um, folk dance or classical dance. So these are things that we uh, ask of students in the Skype interview, just to understand you as a student. Thank you, Shija. I think there is another one which is actually directed towards you, I would say. Are your teachers from Singapore or from India? Uh, we have teachers from India, as in we do have recruits who are, uh, you know, they join us from India, but largely 85% of our teachers are from Singapore. Senior classes, we do have teachers who, ha who are hired from India. So, uh, and uh, I must add here, they're highly qualified. They have a minimum of 20 years experience, the senior classes, and they're well equipped, trained, qualified to teach both the curricula. Thank you, Shija. Uh, there is does the school offer any virtual classroom so we can join, join classes from home? Yeah, I think we've already answered that. Uh, in fact, one of our videos was to talk about the virtual classroom, but we can, we, we are currently engaging in virtual classroom uh, in this situation uh, and it's been going on quite successfully and there are a lot of students who have taken advantage of the virtual classroom uh, while sitting at home or hostel and uh, been able to engage with teachers. And how's the experience, Shija? Uh, it's um, it's quite, uh, uh, we just conducted a virtual classroom last week, so it's quite interesting how it happens. We take first the attendance of students who are joining us virtually. Uh, we um, they, they join in the class discussions that we have. They don't miss out on anything. Everything that is written on the board, the discussions that happen, it doesn't feel as if they are not present in class. They don't miss out anything. Everything is crystal clear. It, it is as if they are physically present in the classroom. So this is the kind of feedback that we've got from students. And, um, but uh, given the situation in Singapore, we do have students walk in, coming, attending classes also. But those who cannot, they have not uh, felt um, any less for not being physically present in class. Thank you, Shija. Uh, this very important question. I think uh, we, we should answer it in uh, the website says there are 42 skill studios. Please explain what these are and how they help us in grade 11 and 12. 
So I think we all can contribute to an extent. There are yes. uh, more than 40 studios that we already talked about and these studios uh, not only include uh, the science labs or uh, the life skills lab, labs, life. Uh, Vishal. So we have science labs, life skill labs, which basically help a student to be more holistically prepared. So we have uh, labs like ceramic lab, uh, culinary lab, um, drama lab. So these all studios basically help in improving uh, life skills. If a child is uh, interested in music or is interested in drama, he can or she can make use of these studios to enhance uh, or develop uh, her or his skills here. So for grade 11 and 12, uh, uh, they will have these studios to uh, use and up to their uh, you know, uh, liking, they can select a particular ECA, CCA and, and make use of these labs. So there are radio studios, there are TV studios. Uh, we have uh, podcasts getting published uh, very regularly, which are engaged and created by the students and even edited and shared with the students. So this entire activity is basically come down to one single phenomena, which we talk about our, our framework, which is our nine gems framework, which is talking about holistic development. So these studios are based on that nine gems pillar of our, uh, of our pedagogy. And uh, when we talk about holistic development, that's where these kind of uh, studios are supporting our uh, students and teachers, facilitating them to learn the life skills of culinary studio or, uh, uh, as I mentioned, the radio studio where people are using the podcast. It is, uh, we call it the Smartcast. Uh, it is available on uh, cloud. There are uh, multiple platforms where it is available. Any more questions, uh, Vishal? Uh we have uh, 12 minutes to be precise before uh, this session comes to an end. I think we're getting one more question. Before yeah, we, move we on have a uh, couple of questions. Uh, depending on the time available, we'll try to see if, uh, as many we can answer. Please don't uh, worry. Anything that is missed out, uh, we'll try and get those answered in the email as well uh, with a so thank the, you email. And Yeah, the invite which is gone has, has the webinar.sg email ID. You can write to us. Uh, if in case uh, we miss out uh, on answering your question. So uh, there is a question, do we get a chance to participate in dance and music activity during the school? Yes, definitely. There are a lot of ECA and CCA options, uh, Shija. Correct. You Other than the ECA, CCA options, which is a part of their curriculum, we have a lot of competitions. Uh, be it house, inter-house competition, a hackathon or a moon a lot of opportunities are given and not only competitions that are arranged and organized by the school, we have student-led initiatives also. So which encourages them as organizers and uh, the common ones for dance people uh, who are really keen on dance, we have something called the Jhankar, we have the GIS Idol for singers, a lot of opportunities. And we have RWCC, which yes, is uh, again uh, an in-house platform which uh, has been developed by uh, GIS. It's the uh, Real World uh, Challenge Convention. Uh, we uh, encourage students to take up a topic which is pretty relevant to the 21st century, which the children uh, uh, will be facing as they get into their adulthood and uh, take up that topic and understand the challenges of uh, that topic and uh, find out solutions, what they think is uh, the real solution and, and that actually um, um, encourages students from different campuses to participate and compete with each other. That's great, she uh, Sheetal and Shija, thank you. Uh, there's a question about the examination. Uh, Rashi, if you want to take this one, how much do we need to score to pass the preliminary written test? So the minimum required is 75 to 80 percent. So in the written exam, you're saying, Rashi, that the child should uh, at least score 75% to go to the next round? Round, right. Okay. Uh, along with the other criteria that are in place, right? Yeah. Right. Okay. Thank you, Rashi. This uh, Navneet has a question. Do you take SAT preparation? Do you help in filling the application on college board? So I guess uh, Sheetal, already, uh, when Sheetal and Shija, when they were answering the question about university placement, and we have a dedicated, we have a dedicated counselor team who helps and supports students in filling up university applications 
uh, and uh, even correct, selecting the right course and guiding them to the, the universities. So there is a whole process involved in it. SAT, we do have a center. We have, we have a center we, here? We've okay. now made it available and prep zone is training our students for SAT preparation also. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I think that's uh, more or less answers all the questions. So with this, we come to uh, the end of uh, today's session. In case you have, uh, uh, maybe you've joined late or you've missed out some portion of our today's presentation, you're most welcome to join in again. Thank you so much. Thank you, Shija. Thank, thank you. you, Vishal. Thank you, Rashi. And thank, thank, thank you, everybody. Thank all you, everyone, for joining, and thank you for all the questions.